You hungry? I'm starving. Hello. We're very lucky. Yeah, you are. But you deserve it. You're both such lovely people. Mum, Dad, this is Katie. Hello. This is Tom Hi. and Jerry. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Tom and Jerry, that's brilliant. <laughs> Tom? Yeah, Buenos Aires. Yeah, because I thought that. Well, you went there, didn't you, the two of you, Argentina? No, I didn't, no. Didn't you? Eat, drink, be merry. It's lovely having your dinner cooked for you. You don't really bother when you're by yourself, do you? I don't, anyway. He was a good looking man when he was young. Was he? Hmm. Life's not always kind, is it? Old lonely people. The movie. <laughs> I mean, Jesus Christ, this movie, another year. It, it's like a dating for, it's an ad for seniors dating sites is, all, I think, what it is. Oh, I know. I, I, to me, it's it's pretty much saying, like, look, if you're going to get old, get married. Yeah. <laughs> o- otherwise, um, the rest of your life is going to be pretty sad. Even then, when they bring in uh, Augustus Filch from the Harry Potter films. So that was him. I, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Okay. and his, his wife died, and they're like, wow, this guy, check him out. He went and did that whole marriage thing. He's still pathetic and old and alone. <laughs> this, this movie, this movie already sounds like something I want to stick in a nursing home and just forget about it. <laughs> you know, the, the, the funny thing about this movie, I mean, you know, I mean, the the plot. I don't know what you would say about the plot. It is about Jim Broadbent and uh, I forgot who played his wife, uh, Ruth Sheen. They're they're an old yeah. British married couple who, uh, and they're happy. You know, yeah, it's they're sweet. Like an old, yeah, old sweet happy married couple. Yeah. And they just have these really damaged, fucked up friends. Oh yeah, they, and family, <laughs> and family. Yeah. But they're like, like, like every season, it's like one of them comes into their lives, and they look like totally gracious to them. Mm-hmm. They they let them just like kind of spew everything, mm-hmm. and they stay nice, and they never like they never sigh or look at each other like, oh brother. They, yeah. they they just treat them sweetly and then send them on their way. I know they're the nicest possible people. They are the, the you know the the good outlook. The, yes. of mm-hmm. of like what your future might be. This right. This is like what you hope for. Is like that whole like wow perfect relationship. They really truly love each other. They're truly gentle and kind people. And like you said, they the only problem in their their whole life seems to be that all their friends are a bunch of losers. <laughs> <laughs> so so are they like the boring couple? <laughs> well, no, they aren't even they aren't even really boring. I mean, because I mean. Everybody, you know, these people depend on them. Mm-hmm. They're like this the stability in their life mm-hmm. is like to look to them yeah. and go like, wow, that's you know, that's that's my rock. Yeah, they're, they're, come... they're hope. Is that what you're telling me? Yeah, <laughs> but 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 these people are hopeless. Well, pretty, the, pretty pretty much. The the um the main uh, uh actress in here is Leslie Manville, who plays their uh, co-worker of, of Jim Broadbent's wife, Ruth Sheen's wife. Yeah. Uh Ruth Sheen's wife. Of Ruth Sheen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who is have you ever been okay. If you've ever hung out regularly at a bar, oh yeah. After a while, you start to notice there's a couple girls, maybe in their late forties, early fifties, who are there like every afternoon, right at happy hour. Mm-hmm. Well, sort of. There are barflies, and then there are these girls. Okay. And these are the girls who service the barflies. <laughs> Sluts. Okay. Yeah. I wasn't going to use that word. No, no. Uh, but there are, you know, obviously after a time, they dress like they're young. Yeah. They get drunk really fast. Yeah. And. It kind of gets embarrassing to talk to them because it becomes clear that they're pretty kind of pathetic. Yeah, we call uh, them uh, old sluts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Well, they serve their purpose, don't get <laughs> yeah. me wrong. But this girl is totally one of those girls. Oh, I yeah. mean, in every way. And it's just, you just wince watching her every delivery of every line of dialogue in this. She's but, still wearing her Daisy Dukes. <laughs> well, <laughs> and, 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 you, and you see dead moths like hanging around. <laughs> not, not, not quite, but almost. <laughs> like, if you ever watched that show, Keeping Up Appearances, there's the, the one sister uh, that they call Rose, or Our Rose, who's that old 50-ish but still dresses like she's 20, uh, very loose and slutty. <laughs> and she, she, I mean, Leslie Manville, she even kind of looks like a younger version of that of the, that same actress. Mm-hmm. And, and just remind me of that. But like, the thing is, this movie, man, there's so many great actors yeah. and performances. Like Leslie Manville, if, um, if I had seen this movie back when we were doing our, our balloting, I would have nominated her for Best Supporting Actress. Oh, yeah. Well, actually, she's getting Best Actress uh, nomination. Really? Yeah. That's she, odd. Yeah, for, the, I think, the Golden Globe, she got that. Okay. But, I thought you uh, said you're going to totally hit on They the considered or her to be the – yeah, right? <laughs> 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 well, to be fair, she's for like a woman her really age, hot. she yeah. is yeah. pretty damn hot. Corey, if he had seen this, oh. man, he <laughs> – I don't know if I'd go as far as what you just said, but Corey, yes. He, he might have whipped it out right there yeah. in the theater. Yeah. So, and, and uh, you'll be buying this on DVD, and, jerking it to every night. 
Betty Gibbs. Yeah. It, it's just funny because like Golden Girls Gone Wild. <laughs> Playtime busts out this DVD. <laughs> but uh, you know, for for uh, man, these great actors and great performances, and I was intrigued by what was going on. And every time they break it up by the season, I look forward to what's this movie's got everything going for it except. A point. <laughs> well, I, mean, <laughs> I, I don't think it's so much that it doesn't have a point. I mean, it does have a point. That life kind of sucks when you get old for most people. I if, mean, if, if, if you live in in London, if you're if, if you're British and you and you get to be past fifty, you ain't got a wife or fucked. a husband. Yeah, you're fucked. Yeah, and even <laughs> like I said, even if you do, you might be fucked too. It's like wow, loneliness is the worst thing ever. And the film ends on such. A downer note, That's too. What I'm saying. I mean, for a film that just progressively gets darker and darker, it's like you. I, I feel like I looked into the magic mirror and and asked, "Whoa, well, oh, magic mirror, what does my future hold?" And it's still pissed at me from something I did last <laughs> week. Because this was just, I wanted. I was just like, you know, I had to hold back from crying halfway through this movie, and there's no particular event. It's just the whole tone of hopelessness and like no one will ever really love you, and you'll just get more and more obviously desperate and pathetic. And, and decrepit, and, and it, it well it seemed like the the filmmaker wanted you to get a sense of that because I only caught the tail end of this movie, yeah. Because yeah. I came over to hang out with Cyrus, and he and there's a shot where it's just the camera hanging on this woman like at a at a dinner table. And she's looking miserable. Her face is melting off because it's so miserable being on her yeah. skull. Yeah. And it wants to crawl away. And I honestly thought for a second that somebody paused it. I thought, hey, dude, you hit pause on this movie. Because it was the shot was just hanging on her. And just like, wow. It's like, okay, is this is this the point in the movie where we have to watch her like disintegrate into a Well, that's the thing. That this movie really is more than anything else. Even though it's all these characters, it's more about her disintegration more than any. Because when it first yeah. starts off, you can see she's kind of desperate. But she's kind of... Peppy and hopeful. It feels like it's a series of vignettes about a bunch of their friends who are falling that way. Yeah. It takes a while before you realize that it's really about this particular woman and how yeah. sad and how, how sad she's I mean, going to get. I mean, because she goes through this arc like there is somebody she could hook up with. Granted, he's probably the only person more desperate and, and sorry than her. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> but instead, I mean, it's. It's really uncomfortable because she just forms an attachment to uh, her friend's son. Yeah, the, 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 to uh, Jim Broadbent, Ruth Sheen's son, uh, Peter White, I think. Yeah. Uh, who is, who is. No, 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 no. It's oh, Oliver, it it's Oliver Malt. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Because it's Joe. Uh, yeah, who's, you know, she grew up being like an aunt to Like an aunt kid. to him, like changing. Uh, you know, like she knew him ever since he was 10 years old. Mm -hmm. Now here he is, what, 30 years old. Yeah. Um, and she's just getting, you know, she's getting this cougar vibe, like, oh, you know, just kind of like very subtly kind of coming on to him. And, you know, it's like, man, it's hard when you're there. It'll be a fly on the wall to watch somebody trying to make a move on somebody and they're doing it slowly. Mm -hmm. And you can see, like, yeah. this is not going to work. Yeah. <laughs> Please pull out like you. you. It's almost like it stops being entertaining. You want to mm -hmm. go over there and like tap them on the shoulder or give them, send them a text and say, mm -hmm. Come here! Stop doing that. Yes, that's fucking wrong. And it yes. just—you just, just sit there for every, every painful second, yeah. squirming in your seat, watching mm -hmm. it, and you think, man, she's gonna piss her friend off. Uh -huh. Oh yeah. The, and the friends don't get pissed off. It, well, yeah. it, is it worse? Okay, because you're talking about the relationship she had with this this younger guy. I mean. Is this guy into her at all? Or is no. he just like, no, no. he's like, well, you're like, you're, he's, you're like one of my aunts. There's he, respect. He, and it's getting incestual. There's respect because, yeah, he grew up with her, like, babysitting him, most likely. Yeah. And they talk about, like, oh, yeah, memories together. And he certainly couldn't be nicer towards her, but there is never a moment that you think that he, there was any returned affection right. on that level. Oh. And she's not, like, slutting it up over him, but, you know, I mean, is it it's there. even halfway savvy, like, student of humanity? You can tell <laughs> that this woman is, like, she's turning down on. Like this pathetic guy, because she still thinks she can hook up with this yeah. this kid, and which is almost incestuously gross. Yeah. As it is. Right, right, yeah, it's it's wrong on so many levels. Yeah. Is she playing the itsy bitsy spider on his pants? Well, dude, it's, she, it's the kind of thing where you know what? I, I suppose maybe it's just that relationship, or maybe it's the the British culture. Like I, I feel like over here there would have been a confrontation. Like that yeah. guy would have said something to her, mm -hmm. or her friend would have been like, "Hey, back off." Yeah. But it's almost like they they like her and they feel sorry for her, they respect her so much they don't confront her. Yeah. So it just keeps. Going. Going. Oh. And he's like, oh. Oh, he's back. That was quick, Tom. Didn't you get the manure? Compost. Here's Joe. Hi, Mary. Hello, Joe. What a surprise. You're all right. I'm great. How are you? Oh, continental. Mm -hmm. It's all sweaty. I've been riding all morning. Have you? I like your hat. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh, that's right. Never forget to kiss your mum. I never do. <laughs> no, you're a good boy, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> I remember when you were this big, you were a naughty boy. I still am from time to time. Oh, really? I like your coat. Oh, thank you. 
I think I'm a bit overdressed for a Sunday morning. What do you think? Is that what you wore in bed? Slept in your bed, actually. Is that all right? As long as you clean the sheets. Oh, I didn't actually. Is that a problem? We'll have to wait and see, won't we? All right. Oh, sorry, Tom. I'm in <laughs> your way. <laughs> all these strong men. Look at his muscles. That's why we had him. <laughs> All right, well, uh, I'm off then. No one to lift at the station? Oh, no, it's all right. You sure? Yeah, I'll be fine. I could do the walk. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about, you know. It's OK. Well, it's good to see you. Oh, thank you, Tom. Are you all right? Yeah, you know. <laughs> Had a bit of a wild night, Joe. <laughs> well, I'd best be off. As it gets towards the end, there's in insinuations that it, she's homeless even maybe it's not even clear they don't say it yeah but she's like obviously hit rock bottom yeah. on some level yeah you... but even worse than that is earlier when the son brings home a girl see and... okay where, where, whereas before it was subtle and you might think like well maybe yeah if she's just drunk and it's just kind of going that way mm -hmm. but when you see her reaction when he brings his a girlfriend that he just met home <laughs> yeah it's just it's just <laughs> ugly <laughs> <laughs> but, you know I, but entertaining too the thing is this is like by... wwe this is by Mike Lay, or is it Lee? Lee, Lee yeah. Mike Lee, who is a, a longtime experienced and well respected British filmmaker, but his films are far from commercial. I mean, I think Topsy Turvy is probably the most commercial film oh, he ever right. made. Oh, that's right, he did do that one. Uh, and you know, the other thing is, I've liked quite a few of his films. I really liked uh, Naked and Secrets and Lies and Vera Drake. I loved Happy Go Lucky. I thought that was the best film he ever did last year. Yeah. Uh, but. The thing is, the way he does his films. Now, don't get this confused when I when I say the word improv, because this isn't the same way they that uh, what's his name Judd Apatow does, where he just says, "Okay, guys, just make something up and we'll film it." He spends like a year or so with his actors, says, "Okay, here's the basic setup, here's the characters you're playing, and now we're going to we're going to write the script together." And oh, they wow. literally they have a script, but they write the script through improvisation sessions with this guy the sounds actors. Sounds lazy. <laughs> I, that's, that's what I was about to say. Actually, yeah. that's about as far from lazy as you can no, get. No, I'm, I'm, I'm kidding. No, those. Actors, actors, those actors, actors would fucking love it. Yeah, they're like, well, I get to write something? Yeah. Oh, most, yeah. Most writers just pop out a script in a couple months. And <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and true. This guy's like, it you know, we're going to sit down yeah. every day and have intense, dramatic like improvs with these people. I'd be like, fuck that. Yeah. <laughs> had that one asshole actor was like, yeah, and then the robots, they start to take <laughs> over. And then they have no hope but to call me. <laughs> okay, you're fired. Oh, yeah. Sorry, sign the contract. <laughs> you got to put in the robots. Yeah. Can I have a Batmobile, too? <laughs> I think what you get from that, though, and this seems typical of a lot of his films, is films that they feel mildly directionless. They just feel like a slice of life. But the characters are so realistic and so in-depth that you end up being involved in the story anyway. Yeah, they really were. I mean, there was... I don't know. I mean, if I had a problem, uh, other than like, you know, I just hate that it just kind of cut off because I, I want it to be more of a point. Yeah. But you have like almost red herrings where uh, um, uh, um, Amanda, uh, uh, Amanda, Imelda Staunton, yeah. Um. She's 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 early in it. Early. Oh, that's right. She was in this movie. Yeah. Yeah. She's in this movie as a as a somebody who can't sleep, and it seems like it's about her. And they kind of send her off, and you keep expecting her to come back. And why she was never she, comes back. Why was she even in this? <laughs> right, 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 right. Maybe she lazily walked in during the shots. <laughs> just, this director apparently just lets his actors do whatever they want. Yeah, we got to melt up for one day. She's just going to do whatever the fuck she wants, and we'll worry yeah, about it you, later. You create your own storyline, and if, it's, if we think it's good enough, we'll go with it. But if not, sorry. Yeah, it's almost like that was a subplot where we came back to edit it and went like, ah. Uh, yeah, I don't want to do this other part. I mean, maybe I'd have to watch it all again to to figure out what you know meaning her character had. But there's no in hell I'm going to do that because this movie made me feel like I was already like seventy and pathetic and dying. <laughs> oh, see, I, I I projected myself yeah. in the Jim Broadbent, so I felt <laughs> fine. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, your feeling is every time I go visit the, the uh, nursing home, whenever I get lost on the street. But yeah, it's it's pathetic, and you want to kill yourself. Yeah. Well, you sit there and you eat tapioca pudding for a week before you tell them you're not supposed to be there. Yeah. <laughs> I love tapioca pudding. <laughs> And smushed yeah. bananas. Where are all the hot chicks hanging out? Yeah, <laughs> yeah they're easy at least. Yeah, when they're, I'm when they're your, asleep. No, no, I'm it. your old husband. Yeah. You are. Yeah. They, they, yes. I, not a statistics are saying that the the people in old folks' homes are riddled with AIDS because that came along like after they stopped being sexually active. So they are like. 
what is this age? Oh, <laughs> have to wear a condom. Back in my day, condoms were for pussies. I ain't doing well, that. you know, it just makes back the... in my day, I just beat a girl over the head and take her. I'll oh, just pour a Coke in her. You'll be fine. Yeah. I suppose you're in God's waiting room already. You know? <laughs> I know. Just get your number called that much faster. Because there ain't nobody in a nursing home sitting around going, man, this place is great. Yeah. <laughs> I love it here. This is so much better than out living on my own, having the use of my limbs and my faculties. It's a smelly, dirty orgy going on. Man, that nursing home, but yeah. Even my review is making me depressed. Uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, what do you guys give this? Uh, you know, for me, it's it's a super high matinee, yeah. and only because just just because of the, the problems I named. I mean, I I almost want to go full price because, like I said, you know, this late in the game, I was like, eh, it's probably another boring one. I was like, no, I'm not boring at all. I'm I'm. I'm digging this, but it, it does have those things, just, just you know, those those few little digs. It's funny. I have to give it a dual rating. I really do, okay, uh, because of the two completely different things. I mean, one, you're absolutely right. I mean, it's a it's an incredibly uh, well crafted in some ways film, but in other, but there's some loose ends there that hurt it enough yeah. that I can't quite give it a full price. Uh, yet, still a very enthusiastic, strong matinee, especially for the performance performances, and most uh, notably of Leslie Manville, who gave easily one of the best performances performances of the year yeah. here on the other hand it made me feel like warmed over shit and i st- <laughs> and it ruined it literally ruined my entire day Did it really it might ruin my month oh, i man. am so depressed by this film that for personal like feelings it gets a fuck you <laughs> cyrus yes me and co-host we're gonna work together we're gonna get you a woman you are not gonna be these people don't worry <laughs> yeah well i don't I want a crazy wait. one either yeah. that oh, never uh, works when your well, friends are like don't worry we'll wait get minute, you a dude. woman no. and they show up with a circus fat lady yeah if you, if you go if you go put restrictions <laughs> like that on us then you're tying our hands pretty much i'm gonna run back to that nursing home and like <laughs> fucking whore up one of those old ladies and throw them in your lap <laughs> i'm gonna tell her that you're her son <laughs> Wait, what does she look like? <laughs> Doesn't matter, she's rich. Yeah. <laughs> she looks like Leon with a wig. <laughs> Deal! <laughs> oh, the baby! Oh, you're the baby! Oh, I'm sorry, Tanya. I knew you were going to do that. Oh, my life. Oh, my God. I'm going to help you.